Hello and welcome to Fusion Fundamentals with me MJ. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to make this uh, little caster bracket. So this would go on a trolley or a hyd hydraulic jack or something and it would hold the wheel fast. We're going to be working off of this technical drawing. I will upload this technical drawing to a Google Drive folder and leave a link in the description so you'll be able to access that. Um, Yes, so let's have a look and see how you go. So for this video, I've just imported this uh, image into another tab on Fusion. You can see we've got side view, uh, isometric view, front view and top view. Um, if we look over here, we can see there's the total height but it doesn't give us too many specifications regarding where this hole is and we can see it's offset there. So I'm going to assume that this line runs tangent to this bottom one as well as that line. So to get started on this one, I'm going to just draw this top view. So it's 30 millimeters and 30 millimeters. So <clears throat> I'm going to select the top view, create a sketch on the top plane. And I'm going to create a rectangle, a center rectangle. This way I can use the, the front plane or the side plane as um, a mirror plane. So it's 30. If I just push tab, it'll go to the other one, 30. So now we've got this fully constrained uh, rectangle. It's constrained to the origin there. I'm going to extrude this. I'm going to extrude it down. It was three millimeters, so minus three. Let me just double check that. Yeah, so the thickness all around is three millimeters. So now I'm going to draw this side profile. There's not a lot of information, so I'm just going to draw a construction line, just sort of box it in, um, so we can see where we where we're going to orient ourselves. So it's a ten millimeter through hole, and that runs ten millimeters from the vertical line running down there, and that center point is nine millimeters from this bottom line there. So let's create a sketch on this front plane. So this is the side of the, of the rectangle we just drew. I'm gonna create line and construction. So I can see that this from the top there runs down 39 millimeters. So let me just select line tool again from this point 39 I'll repeat that going this way doesn't really matter the distance now I can draw my center diameter circle it's 10 millimeters and now we need to dimension it so I know or we can actually just draw the other one as well. So it's nine millimeters diameter, so that's 18. So I know that this is going to be tangent to that line and dimension this. So there is 10 millimeters. So now you can see that that circle is fully constrained. But now we need to get these lines coming down. So I'll select line tool, select the corner over there, and just run it past there. And now we select the line and the circle, so it's tangent. You can see it's also constrained now. Repeat that step, just run it past there, and we're going to make this line tangent to the circle. So now T for trim, I'll select trim and just remove the bits I don't need. Now we can see that looks a lot like that side profile there. So I can finish the sketch. So now that we've got this uh, profile like this, we're gonna extrude it. If you remember, it's three millimeters. So I'm gonna extrude in that direction, three millimeters. So we can see there, three millimeters. And it's a join operation. So now I've got part of it. 
what I'm going to do now is create a mirror of that. Create mirror. I'm going to turn on the origin here. So this is why I've used the center diameter rectangle. So that plane is in the center. So the mirror plane will be that. And I'm going to select a feature and it will be the last feature in the timeline. Now if I click OK, I can see it's mirrored nicely across there. Now let's put in the fillets. So on the inside there, we've got a two millimeter fillet, a rad two millimeter radius fillet, and there's a five millimeter one. So I'll select the fillet tool, select that line, and that line, two millimeters, and okay. So we've got our internal fillet, now the external one, Fill a tool again, and this is a five millimeter. Yeah, so that's looking quite good. What we've got left now is this top part, and then the shaft with the thread on it. So I'm gonna do this top part. I can see there it's got a radius of 20, or diameter, sorry, of 20 millimeters, and it runs up 15.6 from that point there. And I know that that is a three millimeters. So I'll make it from the top plane, I'll go up 12.6 millimeters. And if we look at it, it's connected to the front over here. So let me select the right view, create a sketch. I know this is the front, so I'm gonna have my circle Touching that front part, it's tangent to that line, and it runs along the center line. So there's other ways you can do this, but I like making construction lines. So I can see that it snaps to the center, and I can see my construction line is black, which means it is constrained. So now I'll select coincident constraint. Now I can see it's fully constrained. Exit sketch, and I said this was 12.6 millimeters. So 12.6. Now all that's left is to do the threaded part on top. That's an M10 bolt, so that's a, you can see there it's a 10 millimeter radius, and it goes up 15 millimeters, and then there's a three millimeter solid part with 12 millimeters of thread. So I'll start by drawing this 10 millimeter diameter circle and extruding it up 15 millimeters. So create a sketch on this top face. I can see there it snaps to the center of that one. So there's no need to do any other constraints, just snap to the center and it's 10 millimeters. There it's black, it's fully constrained. We can finish that sketch and extrude up. I'll extrude that up 15 millimeters. Again, a join operation. So this is all one body. If we look in the bodies over here, we've only got one. If we had changed these to, so if I change this to a new body, we'd see we have two bodies there and that's a separate body to those. But I want it to be joined, so I'll just go ahead and change that back to join. There's one body. Now we'll use our thread tool, create. Uh, where's thread? There we go, thread. We simply click on that surface. See, it's already identified that it's M10. If we look in here, it's M10 by one. So that's a one millimeter there. So I'll go back into this. And the designation will be M10, 1, and OK. So this isn't quite what we want. I can see that it just looks like an image. It's not actually modeled. So there's a tool you can select or a feature. It's not opening up. There we go. And if I click there, modeled, it actually cuts into it. 
but I don't want it the full length so I'll click full length deselected and the length will be 12 millimeters so now if we look at it I've got that three millimeter blank spot with the thread and to me that looks like the same thing so there we've got our component I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please like and subscribe Maybe leave a comment, uh, let me know if there's anything you'd like to see me do. Um, if you need any help with any of your drawings, please get in touch at fusionfundamentals at gmail.com. Uh, the link or my email will be in the description. As well as a link to a Google Drive folder where you'll be able to access this technical drawing. Um, this technical drawing I got off of Pinterest. Um, there's no uh, copyright to it I don't think. So you can access this there and uh, have a go at this exercise yourself. Till next time, bye.